Branding. Branding is everywhere. Whether it be in your home, in stores, or even on your person, branding has a very intimate relationship with us. But what is branding? In its most basic form, branding is constitutive rhetoric. Constitutive rhetoric, as defined by the man who coined the term, James Boyd White, in his work Heracles, is the capacity of language or symbols to create a collective identity for an audience, especially by means of condensation symbols, literature, and narrative. So, how is branding constitutive rhetoric? What does it do, and how does it work? The basic answer to all of these questions is that branding, much like constitutive rhetoric, creates an identity. All of the ads, marketing, images, and messaging behind a certain product has the same end goal of creating a distinctive identity, to create an audience for itself. One of the best examples of this is with the Cola Wars, a 1980s competition of marketing campaigns between the established brand, Coca-Cola, and the new up-and-comer, Pepsi. Coca-Cola had always embedded itself in an image of Americana. Coca-Cola meant homeliness, comfort, being refreshing. All communicated in its advertisements, paintings inspired by Norman Rockwell, and careful product placement. These are images that people had of Coca-Cola, what rhetorician Edwin Black would call the first persona. Black defined personas, in the rhetorical sense, as ideology in the same way that Marx used the term. The network of interconnected convictions that function in a man epistemically and that shape his identity by determining how he view the world. The image an entity creates for itself is its first persona, but as a result of this image, the entity, and in this case, Coca-Cola, takes on a second persona, the image of the audience for a certain entity. The audience for Coke was a family-driven one, rooted in conservative American values. When Pepsi came along, times were changing. They appealed to a much younger and more liberal audience, something even their color choice reflects. They created an image that at the time was the complete opposite of Coke, giving Pepsi a distinct identity instead of just being another Coca-Cola ripoff. These ideals were also more in line with those of the time. Pepsi was hip and cool, while Coca-Cola, much like its image, appeared to be a pastiche of a bygone era. Maurice Charlon, in his essay, Constitutive Rhetoric, The Case of the People of Quebec, suggests that constitutive rhetoric creates an ongoing story for itself. His idea was one of interpolation, a Marxist theory that an idea could weave itself into the fabric of a person and become the basis for a society itself. Charlon says, Constitutive rhetorics are ideological not merely because they provide individuals with narratives to inhabit as subjects and motives to experience, but because they insert narrativized subjects as agents into the world. The brand is more than just an image. It creates a society. Apple, for example, creates a society of Apple users by having all of their products function well with each other and not so well with their competitors, like Microsoft and Android. Apple built a society of people who desired streamlined computer use. Macs, iPhones, and other products are not as versatile as their counterparts, but they do not boast nearly as much power. But Apple instead prides itself on being the best product for the average person. A society forms around this, of Apple evangelizers who are able to relate to the narrative of highly technical and obtuse systems being ousted by ones that can be used by an everyman. Branding creates for itself a sort of cult following. Aristotle once noted that it's not hard to praise Athenians in the face of Athenians. Brands create an echo chamber where their message is able to ring stronger. People represent their brand. Brands move beyond being just an image for the company and become a self-identifier. One of the most interesting forms of this happening was with the console wars of Nintendo and Sega. At the time, the mentality of being either a Sega kid or a Nintendo kid was important. Having a Nintendo was not just owning a product, it meant something deeper, a pool of collective experiences that you shared with other kids. Other products have also become self-identifiers. Owning Nike products is synonymous with being athletic, and sports teams form a brand that bonds people together and tears them apart. These identifiers are so strong that they are not only exclusive to the world of marketing, but have become part of our daily lives. Brands have taken the role of a promise. Constitutive rhetoric builds communities around goals. In the case of branding, this goal is their promise to quality, what markets they serve, etc. 
basically their reputation. In the case of Apple, they assure quality and user-friendly interfaces. Brands are a means by which a series of products are able to interact with the people. Branding is a form of constitutive rhetoric that allows for company, product, or even person to form an audience and culture around itself, as well as interact with the culture that it has created.